We begin with how the liberal media have gotten two major stories <clears throat> incredibly wrong. First, the Hunter Biden scandal. The president's son has finally admitted the now infamous laptop with his emails, incriminating documents, and embarrassing photographs actually is his. The New York Post out with this cover, a headline, <laughs> it's mine. Hunter's lawyers now say the laptop does indeed belong to the president's son, their client. But for years, the media dismissed the story, claiming it was Russian disinformation. The U.S. authorities are seeing if those emails we just talked about are connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort. It is so obviously a Russian operation. Hunter Biden, this laptop uh, that intelligence mm -hmm. officials have warned are, is likely Russian disinformation. Ongoing Russian disinformation effort. Ongoing Russian disinformation effort. All of a sudden, two, two and a half weeks before the election, uh, this laptop appears somehow. Now, we also know this name from Watergate. The journalist Bob Woodward is condemning the media coverage of the Trump-Russia investigation altogether. He's criticizing Democrats and the liberal media for ignoring his own warnings about the Steele dossier's shortcomings, saying in an interview that news coverage of the Russia inquiry was, quote, wasn't handled well and that he thought viewers and readers had been cheated. He urged newsrooms to walk down the painful road of introspection. Here he is. Is there anything in the dossier that has been disproven? No, uh, no, I guess uh, the, answer, the short answer to the question. Has anything been soundly disproven uh, about the, the, the Steele dossier? And, and, and I would agree with Jim Clapper, I haven't seen anything. Because it's not been corroborated, but it hasn't been disproven either. The dossier, in fact, is far from bogus. The dossier is far from bogus. It's a fact that none of it, not one word, has been disproven. In fact, a lot of it turned out to be right on the money. So, Tammy Bruce, that was the evidence that Bob Woodward was pointing to as the need for introspection. Yeah, uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, what we know from the media is that they have been really stenographers for the Democratic Party for, well, a couple of generations at least. So I think that it's, it could be a combination of confirmation bias where you see what you want to see because it suits what you want to accomplish. Huh. Uh, or, of course, just a willingness to move along a Democrat narrative because that's what you think is best. Clearly, even Woodward, it seems like he's expecting them to have behaved as though they meant well and they genuinely just got it wrong, whereas they, they had, like, the circle where they would talk to someone from the administration who would then say what they needed to hear. We saw this with Twitter on a variety of issues. It was kind of like a circle of confirmation for people. So this is what I think for the American people, the troubling issue on whatever issue is that the media now has thrown its lot in with one side. They aren't the, the, the fifth estate that asks, you know, questions of power. They don't do that now. Uh, and that is a, a problem for the democracy. You talk about well, problems not all for of democracy. <laughs> that is a key problem for this nation because we've relied on media. We should be able to. Americans want information. And that's what's been revealed by this Columbia Journalism Review report. Uh, and certainly Woodward's comments. Look, this is not the inner circle that I think people are looking for, where the media and administration, Twitter, <laughs> and the offending parties are all in a circle together. Well, look, this is what happens in Washington over the last few years. It's become so polarized, that, and they're going to put out, as you said, here's my idea. We're going to back it up with whatever facts we can find. And it's, you know, all this talk about science, and I love this whole conversation, just follow the science. Well, science is about taking an idea and proving or disproving. What the media did here was they just said, we agree because we don't like the guy in the White House. We don't like Trump. And I saw this through the impeachment. I saw it through Mueller. I thought it just, you know, every day. It was just, and it didn't matter. It, the truth didn't matter. It's amazing to me, though, that Woodward is now getting a conscience. I mean, mm. where was his conscience, you Does know? Does he have a new book out? Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe a book tour. That's fair. Well, okay. Dude, where's my okay. conscience? Hey, it's, it's right next to my checkbook. There it is. Um, <laughs> because they could have listened to him. But they could have, because he could have said this, and he's now saying, well, I was warning about this. He's a very public person. No, he is. Yeah, With but he, big th th this idea that he's back behind the scenes. No, I, I think this is now a saving face moment for a possible, you know, whatever else he wants to do later. You know, Emily, what was interesting to me as a point of fact for Doug here came from Joe Concha last hour on the Faulkner Focus. He said that after Watergate, particularly with Bob Woodward's involvement in investigating that, after all of that, 
The public trusted journalism and journalists, 76 percent of the public did. Mm -hmm. And he said that's been turned on its head. I mean, you would think that even out of self-preservation, Bob Woodward w might have used a megaphone on this one if he thought it were really necessary. And just on that larger scale, too, of that media coverage, you know, there are laws that exist that protect whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. There are laws that exist that that prevent against false testimony to a government agent, to a government agency under oath and the like. And those exist because we're supposed to find import in that. We are supposed to uphold that one lone voice that was actually telling the truth the whole time. So it's so disturbing when we have, you know, remember former Secretary Secretary of State John Kerry, when he falsely and flat out said, no, I deny knowing, I have no idea whatsoever that Hunter Biden is sitting on Burisma's board. We know that to be false. We know that there were plenty of elected officials who in their official and formal capacity denied knowledge of this. And then to see the New York Post, to see good faith journalists that were silenced, mm -hmm. that were sort of the result of a piling on of the yeah. mainstream yeah, media that censured members of the journalistic computing com community, including here at Fox News, to see that happen when we know that there is afforded this really sacred protection for all of those things, it's so disheartening. And I wonder now, as, as we learn more and more, as these investigations play out, what accountability will be held if at all, what amplification process will exist for the truth? Because all I see right now is that machine closed ranks and it was rules for thee and not for me for all of those players involved. So Kennedy, maybe a place where this could be applied uh, contemporaneously is with the classified documents and this particular president and making mm -hmm. it look equal across the board for how the search for them is equal. Well, and the search certainly was urgent when there was a pre-dawn FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago. You know, then, back then, and I, I think you and I are both old enough to remember last year when <laughs> they, they did go to Mar-a-Lago. I'm really old. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. But, you know, it's like the, searching for classified documents was a, a mission of national security and to preserve that. That was the most important mm -hmm. aim the federal government had was to That's why the guns were drawn. Absolutely right. You had to show, but m meanwhile... The, the president, the almost president, then knew that he had classified documents in his possession. He knew that. He knew that he was guilty of the exact same thing. Uh, I just want to make one quick clarification. Bob Woodward did, in fact, do an interview with Fox News in 2017 saying mm -hmm. that he thought the contents of the dossier were garbage. Yeah. And I, I want the press to, Emily's point, I want them to go back to journalism school and sprout some skepticism yeah. because, yes, they are acting like petulant six-year-olds that want something to be true. They had such mm -hmm. yes. Disdain for Trump. They they wanted that narrative to all be true mm -hmm. instead of skeptically and critically looking at it and finding out what was true and what was false. They just assumed. You and know that Bob Woodward knows that he has a megaphone. So 2017, and and you're right to point out that fact. Was it vociferous enough? Was it said in the bastions of the halls where he was at the Washington Post? We don't or was know. It, yeah. yeah. We, we don't, don't know, know because no. he may have said that and they might have gone, Cancel. you know, we need this to be true. So we are going to ignore you. Wow. We are going to ghost you. We are going to silence you because that's what the apparatus, the, the media apparatus yep. that was controlled by the Democrat Party, along with the federal government, that's what they are doing, working in concert with one another to silence people who had those inconvenient truths, Al Gore. Wow. Yeah. Do you think if I call Bob Woodward, he'd sit with me? Because that's what I want to do. You should. Well, yeah. well the interesting, Kennedy just said something about the press, and I agree with you completely. And he may have said that one time, but when I was in Washington during this time, when I was asked questions, because we were in the, in the judicial community, when we're doing model, we're doing the impeachment, it, I was asked, you know, about these things, and if I said something that disagreed with them, I was with contempt. It wasn't, okay, here's two sides of a story. It was, you're wrong, and why are you lying to me? That was the way it came across. And remember what's at stake here, which I just have to say, again, to pierce that narrative, the, the false cloak being perpetuated by that media on the left, the, what's at stake is national security. Our questions, the conflict of interest questions, they all point back to, including the classified documents, national security and the protection of American sovereign security interests. It's not the GOP's obsession with Hunter Biden. <laughs> it's not a lot of other trite and, and polarizing and politicized narratives that you just ex um, gave an example about when it was you as well. So uh, again, bringing it back to what's important, national security is paramount, and that too has been lost on the mainstream media. Look, not to impugn every journalist, because not everybody is like everybody else, but if, if we can't get it straight that that is the priority and not Twitter clicks, mm. we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. mm.
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.